Welcome to the Why Not Podcast with me, Chrissy Hawkins. In a world where everybody always asks you why, I'm here to ask why not. I'm going to do that by breaking down the mindsets of guests and my own to figure out what makes people say, why not? Hi guys, welcome back to Why Not. So we are back on the solo episodes today and I am going to talk about the home truths of why you keep giving up the gym. Seeing as how we're coming to the end of March now and I'd say a lot of people are on their way out of, um, you know, they haven't gotten the results they wanted to yet so they're giving up until they want to go on holidays. But yeah, so you know what, a few home twos, you might feel a bit uncomfortable listening to them but I'm here to give them to you because I've gone through them myself. So if you would like to please sit back and relax or walk and listen otherwise here is my podcast on the home troops and why you keep giving up well hello guys welcome back to why not so we have a little solo episode today it's been a while since i've had one of these because i've had a good couple of interviews recently but i wanted to have a little chat today about kind of hitting the wall and hitting that like slump when it comes to training and I really feel like this is a great time to be saying it now because, you know, we're coming to the end of the Mar- March, we're nearly in April. Anyone who's new to the gym are possibly dropping off now because, say, for instance, you've just been in the same old program for a few weeks now or you've just been going in and pottering around without a program um, or having any structure you're definitely going to start and struggle now. So I find like you'd see this um, when I worked in the commercial gyms. I feel like I don't find it so much in the smaller gym now because we're kind of a little more tighter knit community. But come January, even up until kind of mid end February, people are coming in. Um, either they've gotten a gym program to start off with and they just start doing it and they start getting bored of it. And instead of getting a new one, they just, start doing other things that they saw on youtube or something like that or then other people just come in and they use the cardio machines uh every day and like that they get bored and they this is what they've done before so they come back and do that or you know as i said they'll get a gym program they start to get a little bit bored of it they don't know why they're doing the gym program and then they're like oh well i'm gonna do this instead and the amount of times i've seen very awkward looking members who are clearly not following the program i give them looking at me <laughs> um but yeah so this is kind of what happens especially around now so like we've just kind of had paddy's weekend we're going into kind of april so easter will be coming um anyone who's on lent is going to probably be like woo nearly done and we're gonna eat everything on easter uh but on top of that like days are getting longer more nights out are possibly happening because the days are longer maybe that was from the start of january anyway but people start to really drop off and this is really common as i said and it happens nearly like every year you kind of hit a wall you get bored of what you're doing or you don't have as much time anymore or you get better offers (laughs) and you're hungover more so you don't want to go and that chocolate you haven't eaten for six weeks has become far too tempting so now you're eating six chocolate bars in one go and these are all the kind of things you start to see from people and basically as i said i want to give some home truths as to why you're hitting the wall why you're finding it difficult now all these different things okay so first thing that comes to mind on this is you have to remember that it'll always take longer than you think it's going to be. So if you have a certain goal in mind or body shape or weight loss goal and you obviously have been sold over the years, lose it in eight weeks, do this program, live on air and cabbage, the smell of cabbage for 10 weeks and you lose this weight. Or like this, previously you've gone on and you've done some mad intensive four week shred or six week uh, transformation where you've eaten fuck all and you've trained 10 times a week and by the end of it, of course you lost weight. Whereas say this time you've not done that, but you expect that it's going to happen the exact same way. So basically 
yes you can probably go back and do that shred or do that like thing where you eat nothing or the intensive diet or the mad workouts if you want it's totally up to you and there's nothing wrong with that and those things that are being advertised to you where people are getting abs in eight weeks again may not be lying to you but if they are mostly if say it could be a very small percentage and they're only going to show you their success stories so the people who marketing this is how marketing works because you want that they're going to sell it to you so if this person runs a program they're not going to show all the people who dropped off or all the people who quote unquote failed or the people who say for instance like you might have a small portion of those people who you know only had a couple of kilos to lose and they lost those couple of kilos but they're not going to show you the big people who were never going to make that transformation in that time um one thing about these things as well is you never see them six months later are these people still smashing their goals are they still getting stronger are they still maintaining that weight because you do find a lot of people who do these intensive programs or like that they jump in the deep end they jump into training they jump into doing five six classes a week they burn out because it's really hard to sustain and then they just go back into their old habits or like that because it's really hard to sustain they don't keep it up and instead they give up and just go back to their old habits because the thing about this as well is it's hard to change and get into some consistency mindset when you've been doing something for so long so you can't expect to flip a switch and everything to be fixed in eight weeks you could have eight years of habits and that doesn't change overnight and you say you might think eight weeks is a long time but it really isn't if you've been doing something for years and years and years um it's not going to change in eight weeks and i think we have this crazy thought of like you know body fat whatever needs to go tomorrow because obviously that's what we've been sold and we've been sold this this dream that it happens uh but like it didn't come overnight so you know you don't get that body fat over one meal just like you don't get skinny off one salad so if you are trying to rebuild and change habits of years and years and years you can't expect it to go in eight weeks and that's what we're what we're trying to say here like you know it's going to take longer than i think if you really want long sustainable results that you can keep that it's going to stay you're going to have to take longer and you have to be patient with that and that's what happens you know we join a gym in january we go gung-ho we don't look like a bikini model after two months and we stop and because you keep stopping this is why you'll be back again a month before your holidays in june and then you'd be mad that you didn't get your bikini body in June, so you won't come back after Christmas, or after, sorry, after after your holiday. But then in September, you'll go, oh crap, a little black dress or something like that. Or normally for a little black dress, maybe it's more the end of October. And again, you don't get that overnight result, and you're mad, and you stop. And what is resulting in is you do these little eight week, 10 week maybe bursts, over and over again through the year, with no direction other than I want to lose weight but I don't like but I want to look like this but no context how you're going to get there and you stop every time it doesn't happen and then over the course of the whole time you get nowhere because if you actually stayed on it and kept training you'd probably get to where you want to be and yes it won't be as exciting but you will have to take that time to get there and then you'll probably might maintain it instead of doing these eight week bursts four times a year and just rebounding and just ending up the same all the time so maybe it's not the case that it doesn't work for you you're not giving it long enough um the biggest thing is a lot of the time with these is consistency and people don't, don't want to be consistent people want just a next day result you know and it's not going to happen unless you are consistent so a next one that you probably don't want to hear is do you want the results okay you want these results 
do you want to do the work to do it? Okay, because everyone wants a six pack, a flat stomach, uh, ripped muscles. Well, men want ripped muscles, girls want to be toned. By the way, toning is just building muscle. And if you don't believe me, it's true. Um, you know, we want a flat stomach, we want a big bum. Um, you know, we want to be low body fat and a side of it and maybe not necessarily being a healthy body fat for a girl to be in because we shouldn't be below a certain body fat to do with our hormones. I've done a couple of podcasts talking about this so you can check any of the girls related hormones. There's a few podcasts there but it takes a lot of work to stay in that low body fat. You are talking controlling every meal, making sure you eat perfectly, you know, nights out. Mm-mm you looking for uh drinking no out the do- out the window okay you're looking at probably doing at least a hour of cardio if not longer a day on top of your training sessions you will probably get when we want you probably take two days off a week but you want to be doing probably weights five days a week you'll be doing cardio at least an hour possibly two hours a day every day um you want to yeah perfect diet has everything to a t no treats no nights out no drinking if you want to maintain that body long term and a lot of people don't want to do that and on top of that remember when you have a low body fat you're going to be colder as well people don't talk about this so you're going to be cold all of the time because you're on low calories and you've low body fat and body fat is insulation and when you are not fueling a huge amount you will also get you will also get cold all the time um you will probably start dreaming about donuts when you're asleep <laughs> um you'll be cranky um well like if you're eating enough a leaf enough food you probably won't be cranky but you know a lot of the time to stay in these low body fats you're probably not eating a lot of food and a side effect if for anyone who has been on low calories is hunger and you have to be ready for that too like that is all going to happen to you as well in order to look at that body a lot of people who are doing photo shoots and stuff like that they are not looking like that all year round they're doing an eight-week shred or whatever to do the photo shoot and then they will go back to eating normally and they will be a little fluffier is the term i think i think a stupid thing basically they have more body fat than they would in the shoot and you know okay men can stay at a lower body fat for longer periods of time because men have life easiness it's annoying <laughs> but for women in particular as well as i said it's going to disrupt your hormones it could disrupt your cycle all these things that are going to negatively affect you just to have a six pack or to look like an instagram model and we have to remember this like if this is our ideal body type are you ready to do this are you ready to put in that kind of work are you go able do you have the time as well by the way because like you know these people who look like this are paid to look like this and we forget about this so you're going oh my god why can't i get her body when her job is literally the person you're looking at is to look like that her job is to train eat and sell products because they're models Instagram models, normal high fashion models, literally it's their whole job. Whereas you're trying to do that on top of doing your nine to five or even shift work. You could be working shift work. So you're trying to work your job. Have you a family? Have you got like, do you have friends you want to see? Things like this. You know, you're you're giving up so much just for, to look a certain way. And you're forgetting that like, these people that we are projecting that we want to be are literally paid to do that and you are not paid to do that um so the likelihood is in order for you to get around all those things that you want to do you're going to have to now cut out sleep which is going to help affect your health more so if you staying up or uh, till all hours doing cardio and then getting up first thing in the morning again to go train before you go to work um are you gonna be like giving up your whole sunday or day off to meal preps that's all you have to do that week you know 
when you put it into context like that, do you actually want to do all that? And if you don't want to do that, that's fine because nobody has to do it. But you have to be real with yourself and go, actually, you know, this is not something I'm interested in doing. And if you're not interested in doing that, absolutely fine because you can still have like a really good physique and a really strong and happy relationship with your body and your food and your training without looking like that. Um, you know, there are people in really good shape who can also enjoy, um, like they can enjoy a drink, they can enjoy a night out, they can have a treat without worrying about it. And that comes from years as well. Like, you know, they're not built overnight. The people who are saying, like, you know, who, as I said, who are in really good shape and are enjoying a drink and stuff like that, have spent the time building the muscle, have probably gone through these issues of eating as well um, and eating properly or not eating properly but eating like a nourishing diet and they just have come through the other side and they've learned from it and they probably have had six packs and they probably have had like that really lean look but realise it's not worth it. Um, I have been that lean. I know it's not worth it. I am still pretty lean. I'm not saying I'm fat now, but you know, I prefer enjoying my life over um, the strictness that you have to do it. And it's mine for short periods of time for certain things. Like if you have goals of doing it, uh, they can be great, but it's not a long term sustainable thing. And you have to be ready for that. Like, are you, are you willing to do that? Um, and if the answer is no, that's okay, but make peace with it and stop saying it's not a lack of discipline. It's an extreme that nobody needs to do unless they're being paid to do it. And even then, they probably don't need to do it. But, you know, if it's going to pay your wages, absolutely do it. If it's not and it's just for the two days a year, you'll be able to show your stomach because we live in Ireland um, or when you're on holidays, then it's probably not worth doing. One of the things as well that I think, like, it's so important with like maintaining a relationship with training as well is stop trying to lose weight and I know I've banged on about this numerous times on the podcast and just been like look weight is not the thing and it's true okay yes people will have will lose weight in conjunction with losing body fat people have weight to lose that's fine but relate weight is your relationship with gravity it's not the be all and end all if you're focusing and obsessing so much on losing weight, we become fixated on this little jump in the scale or the scale going down or, you know, everything's not right. But like, even if you look at like, say scale fluctuation, if you look at your times of weighing yourself over the times, are you seeing a trend of where it's always down? That's progress. But, you know, you can, if you stop looking to lose weight is when you generally lose weight. That sounds weird, but listen to this. For me, for years, I would chase the scales. I stopped looking at the scales for a long time. I do more now with progress pictures. Uh, I've, I used to take uh, measurements, haven't done them in ages, but I have built more muscle when I stopped focusing on how much I weigh. I've become leaner when I stopped focusing on the number on the scales. Whereas before, it was all about where, like what I weighed. Did I get this arbitrary number? was I at that number? I'm not at that number. Oh, well, I'm wasting my time. You know, um, we've all, I don't think, I say we've all, I think most people have been there at some point, kind of obsessing over the weight and the number on the scales because we're taught, you know, you know, BMI doesn't help either. Like, oh, right, that's it. Sorry, you're, you're way too much, you're fat. Um, but there's the age old thing, like, you know, if you had a hundred kilo person and a hundred kilo rugby player stand on the scales, just both of them same, same height, they would both be, by BMI, morbidly obese, yet the rugby player is a trained athlete and this other person is just your general, you know, overweight person. So I think we need to remember that as well. Like, you know, it's not, it's not, there's no, it's, it doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you if you weigh more and you can gain weight. We've talked about this before and, and people don't want it listen to this either but you know muscle is denser than fat it does not mean that muscle 
weighs less than fat or weighs more than fat, it's denser. So basically, one kilo of fat and one kilo of muscle, they're the same, but muscle takes up way less space. So if you build muscle, that takes up less space than the fat, which makes you look leaner. So you can gain weight and muscle weight while appearing leaner. And this is something we forget about when we're looking at the scales all the time and we're going, why am I not losing weight? Whereas if you took a picture or took measurements, you could be like, oh, look at that. Actually, I can see where that's come in. I can see where that's changed. These are all the times where we're forgetting because we're too busy looking at that number on the scales. Um, another thing as well is the more muscle you have in your body, the more calories it takes for your body to run. Muscles take up more calories, which means you can eat more to just survive, which means you can enjoy more food without worrying about gaining weight and gaining body fat. So it's really, really important to remember all of these things when we are chasing the scale, chasing the thing. Stop trying to lose weight. Pick a different goal. Um, what could you do? What What could you do? Would you want to run a 5k? Would you want to be able to um, lift a certain weight, do a pull up, do a press up. If this is a goal that you have and it's in your head, you can work towards that and weight no longer becomes an issue. I've spoken to several people on this podcast who are trainers, who are female trainers as well. And the time that they finally stopped struggling weight is because they got into something that started training for strength. And when they build strength, naturally, in a sense, the weight started to come off them as well because they were no longer focused on this one singular thing. And I'm not saying these people were fat, I'm just saying these people had um, in, their, in their eyes weight to lose, but eventually they no longer had to wait, lose it, if that makes sense. So I just think the worst thing is when you're trying to lose weight is obsessing about trying to lose weight. Um, pick something else that you want to work for and that is like a more positive goal to work for. Um, you know, it's it's something you want to work towards, something you want to do for you, as opposed to just a way you want to look. And this one, I think, is really, really important. That's why that's why I say it. And this is why I kind of talk about it all the time. Like, try to get strong. I like trying to get strong. Let's not focus on weighing scales. I have these conversations with clients. I'm like, let's not look at the weighing scales. Let's try and do something else. If you're getting these emotional responses, it's not good for you. Um, another thing just to add in on that is the whole, the whole good and bad food. I've spoken about this before as well, but I do find that we still have that in our head. It's like, oh, I shouldn't be eating that or and anything like that kind of thing, saying the food, you shouldn't be having that food or I've been bold or I've been like, you know, I've not been eating great or I, I've eaten too much, like... All these kind of negative things in your head are going to like reverberate around going like that. Like, oh, I've broken it again. I'm never going to lose weight. What's the point of trying? And then we're out the door again. You know, we want to be like, okay, I've had it. Draw a line under it and move on. And that is a much better way of going forward when you are trying to lose weight. Like, you know, you're like, oh, I was bold. You weren't bold. You just had food. Like, what's the difference? Um, what was the difference in that? Did you like sometimes sometimes the healthiest thing you can do is eat a chocolate bar and I say this because if you, sometimes you just need something sweet and enjoyable okay you know if you've had a mad day and you're tired and you just want it and it'll make you feel better that's totally fine why would you deny yourself that enjoyment just because it's quote-unquote bad food so you know I've seen this before um, on Twitter. It's like sometimes healthy for someone is being able to turn down pizza, and sometimes for healthy for someone is being able to enjoy a slice of pizza guilt free. Okay, this is not mine. I think Jordan saw it. I've seen him tweet that. And when you think about that, that makes a lot of sense. Like if you can just, if you always are worrying about stuff like this, it could be way more healthier for you to be like, you know what? I had the pizza. I enjoyed the pizza. It was fun. I like pizza as opposed to going god i had pizza now i have to go to the gym tomorrow and i have to do an hour on the cardio machines because i um i need to make up for it you never need to make up for it being able to enjoy it is part of life like we are not 
here just to be an ornament uh, your body is not an ornament your body is an amazing thing um especially if you're a woman like you know they do so much different things like you know they can like birth the whole child and grow one you know um but we treat it like it's this ornament and if we don't have the perfect ornament we there's something wrong with us but there is no such thing as perfection we want to be i feel like we should like be challenging our body to see what we can do like what can you push you to do what would it be really good at like what is something you never thought you'd do like there doing those things is like way more an achievement i think than being super lean um so they're amazing our bodies are amazing things so let's challenge them to see what other things we can do as opposed to you know just trying to make it look pretty <laughs> there's nothing wrong with it wanting to look pretty but just as I said, like, it's so good to just be able to see what I can do and show people what you can do. Because, like, it's so interesting seeing, like, how strong we can be and the weights we can lift and the things we can do that we never thought we could. But, like, you just get a bit of encouragement and you give it a go. And I think that, to me, like, is always, like, so much, like, so much more of an achievement. But, again, like, having aesthetic goals, is there's nothing wrong with it, but it shouldn't be everything. And I think this is the problem. For us, it's everything because we think we need to look a certain way for others. And that's why we're four months into the year and all of us are not getting that aesthetic goal that we thought we'd get because so-so on Instagram posted our, our transformation of eight weeks and we're wondering, like, well, I did that. Why didn't that work for me? So now I'm going to give up again. Whereas instead of, like, enjoying what we're doing and training for strength or new achievements and being able to like do things you never thought you'd do this could keep you going longer getting into the enjoyment of it like it's not something you have to do it's something you should be something you want to do and yeah like another thing is like not every training session will be great and not every training session will be amazing um susan ebergall spoke about this in the podcast with me as well and you know some of the days you just get through the session but sometimes that's all you need. Like, you know, you've done the session. It wasn't amazing. You will not have PBs every day. You will not, you know, you will not get, um, gain more muscle every, every week. There will be days where you have shit sessions and you just get through the session. And sometimes a little walk outside is all you need to just clear your head. It doesn't necessarily have to be an intensive workout. Um, you know, but that's that's part of it too like it's just called being human and i feel like people beat themselves up for not having like a perfect training session not having like as good a day last week as they did like you know or not matching something but like you completely forget like you might have slept badly you might have not been able to eat you might be slightly sick there's all these other things hormone fluctuations that happen to women as well all these things can add up to you having a bad training session but like you need that because as i said you're human you're not a robot so how can you expect to be the same thing over and over again like you wouldn't beat yourself up for other things actually we probably would to be honest because again we're human we're just negative self-talk all the time but you know just be aware of these things like just because something's not going 100 percent perfect this week that's just part of life you know nothing's supposed to be perfect like if it was all the same every week you'd be so bored like think about that like think about it every week doing the same thing over and over and nothing changes and you do like it will get really boring really quickly and that's the beauty of being human and it comes with you know downsides like not having a class training session every week like you want to or you know having a bad night's sleep or being dying over for three days instead of one because you're 30 now and you're not 21 anymore <laughs> and that only gets worse from what i've heard so just remember it's just things to remember like as i said really really important to remember is the human element of it because we are human and there's nothing we can do about that um they haven't made uh, enough advances in science yet for us to be able to train perfectly every day. But again, as I said, I don't think you'd want to do that. I think it's more interesting to have things change and be different. And that's one of the beauties of being human. So I think I'm going to leave it at that. I think that was enough rants. These are a few home truths that you may not be happy about hearing. And 
honestly, I want you to be unhappy about hearing them because it'll challenge your perception and make you think about things that maybe you have not been looking at it from that perspective before and maybe it's time to reevaluate how you're thinking and change your thought process and with that I think it might make you get to that point now in life where you will make that switch and consistently will become a thing and you will get to the goals that you want or even better you'll change the goals and realize they're not worth it that's not what we want to do that's totally okay too like changing your goals is is not wrong um people change goals from time to time so that's what i kind of wanted to go for today i just wanted to as i said had a home tro- a few home troops hopefully you felt a bit uncomfortable hearing these because you don't want to want to know because you're different and i guarantee you you are not different i'm sorry you're not um <laughs> there's enough signs out there to say that we're not that different uh you're probably not going to be the the uh the exception that proves real i'm really sorry about that but you probably need to hear it if you guys want to find me you will find me on instagram as ever it is chrissy h fitness i'm also on tiktok at chrissy h fitness and you also find my website where you can find out about doing coaching with me online coaching or in person it's www.chrissyhawkins.com i hope you guys have a really good day today and i hope you enjoyed this podcast Thank you again for listening to the Why Not Podcast. It really means a lot that you are listening in and I would love if you could please leave a review on Apple Podcasts or subscribe on Spotify. And always, I'd love to hear feedback personally. So if you do want to leave me a message and let me know how you found the podcast, please do.